Hey guys, this is Angelo. Today I'd like to talk about a subject that I get tons of questions about all the time and that is how much protein should you eat on keto? Let me start this video by talking about a story that I read recently because I think it might apply to many others that are doing keto right now. The CEO of Diet Doctor, a site that you might know as well, did an experiment to find out what actually helped put him into ketosis. He thought he was doing keto right as he was eating low amounts of carbohydrates and a maximum of 45 to 60 grams of protein because he was worried that if he ate more protein, the excess protein would be converted to glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. But for some reason, his ketone readings were still low and he wasn't getting into an optimal level of ketosis. And he only found out after writing down all the foods he ate over a day, small amounts of berries, some nuts, some just the carbs from his veggies, etc. He found out that he was actually getting 30 grams of net carbs per day instead of the 20 grams that he was aiming for. And those extra carbs he was eating were actually the reason why his ketone readings were lower, not because he had to lower his protein more. And he realized this when he did an experiment where he tested his blood ketones day after day while increasing his protein intake to 80 to 130 grams per day before he was eating 45 to 60 grams per day, so almost double and while keeping his carbs below 20 grams of net carbs. So he did this over 10 days and he was surprised that day after day when he was testing his blood ketones, he always ended up at around 2 millimolar, which is an optimal level of ketosis, even though he was eating way more protein. I put a link to the article in the description below so you can check it out yourself. Something worth mentioning though is that he wasn't overweight, he's not insulin resistant and he does light exercise 15 minutes per day 5 times a week. And this might somewhat uh, increase the protein that he's able to handle while staying in ketosis. Still, I think this story was worth mentioning because I think many of us start fixating on not eating too much protein because of fear of gluconeogenesis. This is not to say that gluconeogenesis can't be a factor, but eating too many carbs is way more likely to be what's keeping you out of ketosis or kicking you out of ketosis regularly. And excess protein doesn't magically convert into sugar in your belly. I'm sorry if I confused some of you in my previous videos. Still, how much protein should you eat on keto? There are many different opinions on this out there. And for example, Dr. Adam Nelly and Jimmy Moore, that you might have heard of before as well, they usually tend to recommend a lower protein intake. Others, like Dr. Jeff Bolek and Stephen Finney, two of the most respected keto researchers out there, recommend a protein intake of between 0.6 grams to 1 grams per pound of lean body mass in their book The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living. Most online macro calculators for keto tend to also stay within that range and some go a little bit higher on protein if you exercise a lot. What you will notice if you use one of those calculators is that the protein stays the same once you chose your activity level. So no matter where you're trying to lose weight, to maintain your weight or to gain weight, the amount of protein that they recommend stays the same as well as the carbs, which stay between 20 to 25 grams of net carbs in those calculators. The only variable that changes up or down, depending on your goal, is fat. That's also how I would recommend you approach this. First of all, calculate your lean body mass by figuring out your body fat percentage. There are many ways you can measure your body fat, and to keep it simple, I put the link in the description below, where you can visually estimate your body fat percentage. It's not a precise method to do this, but it's gonna be more than good enough for most people as a starting point. Now you take your current weight, here's mine, 156 pounds. Then you need your body fat percentage, mine is 9%, approximately, last time I measured. And you multiply the percentage with your weight to get to your pounds of fat, which you need to subtract from your weight to get to your lean body mass. In my case, it's 142 grams, uh, 42 pounds of lean body mass. Now that you know your lean body mass, I would set your daily goal for protein at 0.6 grams per pound of lean body mass, which in my case is 85 grams of protein per day, and your limit at 0.9 grams per pound of lean body mass, which in my case ends up being 128 grams of protein per day. Eating more than that won't necessarily kick you out of ketosis, as every one of us is different, but you may notice feeling more clear-minded and focused when you stay in the lower end of that range. At least that's the case with me. All of this means that for me personally, my daily goal for protein is 85 grams, and my limit is around 128 grams of protein. I tend to only hit the upper end of that when I worked out hard that day, but usually I just 
eat 85 to 100 grams of protein per day, but that's just my personal preference. Okay, back to gluconeogenesis. First of all, it's actually hard to determine exactly how much protein you need each day and what's going to be too much, depending on your activity levels, etc. So you need to test if you want to be sure. And if you're insulin resistant, you might not be able to handle as much protein as someone else. So you should take note of how you're feeling when testing this. Are you having an energy crash or are you energized? Do you feel snacky all the time or do you feel satiated and not that much hunger? Test your ketones whenever you're not sure. Either way, you probably don't need to worry about a little extra protein kicking out of ketosis. Obviously, large amounts will. So if you're usually eating 90 grams and that's your goal and you're eating 200 grams per day now, but keeping your carbs below 20 grams of net carbs is way more important. Another important thing to keep in mind is that protein is the most satiating macronutrient out there per calorie. So if you're restricting your protein too much, you likely end up eating more fat, which is more calorie dense than protein, as well as more veggies, which in itself is not a bad thing, but those carbohydrates from the veggies add up over a day. Let's make a simplified example. Let's say you're eating 150 grams of broccoli per meal, or you're eating 300 grams of broccoli per meal three times per day. If you're eating 150 grams per meal, you end up with 16 grams of net carbs for that day, for the broccoli. And if you're eating 300 grams three times per day, you're at 32 grams of net carbs, which is already above the 20 grams of net carbs you want to be eating per day. And it's much more likely to keep you out of ketosis than eating 20 grams of extra protein would. So here's the point I'm trying to make. Try not to overcomplicate things. Just make sure you stay under 20 grams of net carbs and that you get at least 0.6 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. And then you add enough fat to keep you satiated. Except when you're fasting, of course, then you don't want to eat anything. In my opinion, this is the perfect time to be talking about this. Since Christmas and the holidays are right around the corner and you're probably about to start celebrating with your loved ones. And while overindulging is never recommended, if you're going to, you're better off sticking to protein sources. Overeating protein is always a better option over eating carbohydrates. And since protein is more satiating, you'll likely stop eating earlier and end up eating less calories in total. My girlfriend Jofi and I do the same. When we're invited for dinner somewhere and there aren't that many low-carb, high-fat options around, we tend to eat a little more protein, but that's totally fine. Before I take off, I would like to wish all of you Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays in advance. I hope you have a wonderful time with your loved ones. And if you like today's video, then please don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I'll see you soon. Bye.